Welcome to Damn Good Movie Memories with your host, Ryan Davis. This podcast is the cure for your long commute and super boring work day. Hey there, it's Brian Davis, and for this week's episode, we're going to work, and we know we hate work, but some people like work. I enjoy work. Where do you think I get all my podcast guests from? Anyway, we're going to talk about our favorite workplace movies, and this could be all over the map. Some are obvious, some maybe not so obvious. There were so many that I had that I had to go beyond a top 10 list, but I'll limit it to 10, but then I have tons of extras that I'll just kind of go through quickly afterwards. Uh, But for now, I'll get into my top 10 list now. All right, number 10 is Teacher's Pet from 1958. This is a wonderful romantic comedy, but it's often forgotten from the filmographies of Clark Gable and Doris Day. This is also one of the final films that Gable starred in before his death in 1960. So here's the plot, if you don't know it. Doris Day plays a journalism professor who requests that a professional newspaper journalist, played by Clark Gable, speak at her adult night school class. Uh, His attitude is very old-school journalism, and he doesn't think much of, quote-unquote, learning how to become a journalist. He feels that it should be more of an instinctual thing. He sends a very rude rejection letter back to Doris Day, but is ordered by his managing editor to speak to the class. So he arrives late to the class, only to hear Doris Day, you know, reading his very (laughs) condescending note to her students. He's too embarrassed to say anything or or to say who he is, so he decides to act like he's a student in the class instead of admit who he really is. Of course, you can kind of guess the hijinks that go on in this movie. The movie's a ton of fun. Uh, I always enjoy Doris Day and Clark Gable's Clark Gable, so you can't go wrong. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. Number nine is Men at Work from 1990. Now I realize this is not the band. This is actually the movie with Emilio Estevez and Charlie Sheen. I love movies like this, and I did as a kid. I still do, and I know it's cliche, but they don't make goofy, throwaway, no pun intended, comedies like this like they did in the 80s and the early 90s. And and don't get me wrong. I enjoy you know the Judd Apatow movies of today's era, uh, but there really isn't. It's not necessary to have a comedy that's over 90 minutes long. I mean, you give me 90 minutes and I'm good. Anything longer, I might as well watch The Godfather. So I I just totally remember making my mom rent this a lot when it first came out. And the movie was totally silly. It totally cracked me up, and it was mindless entertainment about two garbage men who find a dead body who ends up being a who is a politician, and uh, so they kind of go on this crazy, you know, uh, <laughs> hunt for who this guy is and who he who he got killed by. And along the way, they pick up Keith David, who you've heard him, you've seen him in tons of things. He is hilarious. He plays uh, Cameron Diaz's dad in uh, There's Something About Mary. He is in, um, what else? Oh, he's in the original, oh, not the original, but the remake of The Thing with Kurt Russell. Just a terrific actor. One of the best voices in Hollywood. And he is terrific. He's just like this about to snap at any minute ex-Vietnam uh, vet. And he's just, it's comedy gold. So I recommend checking it out if you want some mindless entertainment about, I guess, a job. It definitely is a job. <laughs> they're they're hauling trash every all day. Lewis, what the hell are you doing? He saw you with the body. He just got all kinds of trouble. So you kidnapped him? Good solution. Here, take the money. I won't say anything to anybody. You bet you won't. What the hell? I... Extra cheese? You're a madman! He was provoking me. This situation has definitely gotten way out of hand. Get back to that window and keep Carl covered. Well, what the hell do we do with him? We need some rope. If I had my 16, I could pick her off so easily. Hello, this is good. Dogs. Did you make Hi, it? Hannah. Hoarding from Hannah Hilton. Jackie Dogs, you might as well be lost. Born is lost. Jane Fonda was right. Are you hungry? Would you like some? Don't give him any, James. Why not? He might be hungry. He's a prisoner. He should be treated accordingly. Have you completely lost your mind? We're not soldiers and he's not the enemy. He's a pizza man. Back in Fubai. He would have been killed the second he knocked on that door. I would have snapped his neck like a twig. And he never would have seen it coming either. Lewis, Lewis, calm down. The commie bastard gets no food! 
Number eight is Working Girl from 1988. I remember my mom really liking this movie when I was growing up. Pretty sure we had a copy of this on VHS that my uncle taped off of HBO. Thank you again, Uncle Daryl. He didn't even put Lou Grant on this like he did for The Jazz Singer. If you want to hear that story, go check out that episode. And uh, yeah, those were the days. Working Girl is a terrific romantic comedy starring Melanie Griffith, Harrison Ford, and Sigourney Weaver. Uh, If you don't know the plot, Melanie Griffith works at an investment bank on Wall Street, and she's uh, under her overbearing boss, uh, played by Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver breaks her leg on a skiing trip. She's on bed rest, so of course you need some sort of hijinks, so... Uh, Melanie Griffith decides to use this to her advantage and starts making connections in order to rise within the company, and one of these connections is Harrison Ford, but he also happens to be Sigourney Weaver's ex-boyfriend or kind of boyfriend. It's a little sketchy. In any case, you can kind of guess what happens next, and if you can't, check out the movie. It's tons of 80s fun. All right, number seven is Empire Records from 1995. This is a super fun movie. This actually could have been on movies that take place in one day about a group of people that work in a record store and it's kind of going out of business, but it's just all these hijinks that go on. These people, you know, like if you think of like high fidelity and things like that, this is like if you're working in an independent record store, it'd be a high, high fidelity. If you're working at what used to be like Tower Records or something like that, that would be this place. Um, it's great. You know, you have Liv Tyler, Renee Zellweger, uh, Anthony LaPaglia, Robin Tooney. Uh, it's just Ethan Embry. Uh, it's just a really fun movie. It reminds me of an 80s movie. I mean, we could do a topic where you could do almost 90s movies or the you know 2000s movies that feel like 80s movies. This feels like an 80s movie. It's a lot of fun. The music's terrific. Uh, Metal Mike and I talk about some great scenes, one involving uh, one of the most underrated ACDC songs off the Highway to Hell album, which is called If You Want Blood, You Got It. So definitely check out Empire Records if you haven't seen it. Number six is Used Cars from 1980. This is hilarious. It took me a long time to actually see this one. I remember seeing it as a kid, and I didn't really appreciate it, and then I saw it years later, and this is absolutely hilarious. This is one Kurt Russell movie you might have missed. You know, for the most part, Kurt Russell was kind of known for his Disney films, and then uh, he's starting to get into more adult roles, and this would be one of them. This is just great. Kurt Russell is terrific. He plays as you know, kind of a sleazy used car salesman. You know, that's kind of redundant, but there you go. And then uh, Jack Warden actually plays dual roles. One, he plays like the good um, dealership owner, which is where Kurt Russell works, and then he plays the evil, like his twin brother who owns the dealership across the street. And so when the good one dies, the other one's trying to take over for his brother, and so they kind of there's all these hijinks that go on, uh, trying to you know outbeat the other one and there's some absolutely hilarious where they kind of take over a uh, television station and they they interrupt like a a football game and they start showing you know their advertisement and it's just priceless it's a terrific movie definitely check out used cars fighting high prices not only by murdering high prices but by blowing the living shit out of high prices yes sir you heard me right now here's an example 1973 Cadillac Coupe de Ville for $62.99. That price is too high. Yes, sir. Here's another one. It's some Lincoln Continental Mark IV, 1973. It's loaded. It's got air conditioning. It's got a stereo. It's got white wall radio tires. It's got power steering, power brakes, power seats, power windows, and a price that is just too high. Yes, sir. Now remember, friends. Look out, Marshal Lucky. It's high prices. Take this, you dirty old high prices. Yes, sir. So remember, friends, that's New Deal used cars. Now, wait just a goddamn minute. What the hell is this? Is this a 1977 Mercedes 450 SL for $24,000? That's too fucking high. You son of a bitch. Uh, Yes, sir. We blew the shit out of that overpriced motherfucker just the way we blow the shit out of all high prices down here at New Deal Used Cars. So y'all come on down. Did you hear what I said? New Deal Used Cars. So y'all come on down. Did you hear what I said? I have heard you. 
with unmistakable clarity. Number five is one of my favorite Michael Keaton movies, and it's Mr. Mom from 1983. And you might be thinking to yourself, how is this a workplace movie? Well, one, you have the kind of the traditional role reversals where instead of having Terry Garr be at home with the kids, Michael Keaton loses his job at the auto plant in Detroit, and so he ends up being the stay-at-home dad, and Terry Garr goes to work for an advertising executive. And it's actually great because arguably one of the hardest jobs in the world is to be a parent, and especially a stay-at-home parent, because you have to deal with the day in and day out that, you know, sometimes going to work is more of a break than actually staying home with the kids. So it was it's a fun movie. It's actually... Uh, it was written by John Hughes, and uh, Martin Mull is just terrific as, like, he's a very sexist, skirt-chasing boss, but he plays the role perfectly. Uh, similar in vain to Dabney Coleman in a movie that we might be talking to- about later. Uh, but there's so many great scenes with Michael Keaton, like him attempting a grocery shop and his disastrous attempt to drop off the kids at school. You know, they're telling the, you know, South to drop off, moron. And uh, him trying to impress his wife's boss by revving a chainsaw in the house. I mean, there's it's it's a very funny movie. And if you forget about, you know, if, you, if people only know him for Batman, go back and check out, like, Night Shift and Mr. Mom and Johnny Dangerously. There's great Michael Keaton movies from the 80s. Yeah, you passed it. Passed what? We're right on time. But, Dad, you're doing it wrong. Mommy doesn't do it like this. We're going to do it the Jack Butler method. What is this? This is nuts. Why are they all honking? Because you're doing it wrong. Tell me I'm doing it wrong. I know how to do this. Hi, Jack. I'm Annette. Hi. You're doing it wrong. See? See, this is what I tell all my new mommies. We enter from the south and we exit from the north. And then we do just the reverse when we pick up. Swear, little ones don't have to walk between the cars to get to the learning facility. Okay, move it up. And remember, south to drop, drop off, up. north to pick Take up. Take them up. Okay, it's a good system. <laughs> Number four is Kindergarten Cop from 1990, and you might be laughing, but this is actually a dual job movie because he's undercover. Of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger plays a a cop trying to catch a killer or an escaped convict, and then he's also undercover as a as a teacher, and he ends up becoming a decent teacher. Uh, I always enjoyed this movie as a kid, and I think I was 12 or 13 when it came out, and uh, if you've never seen this movie and you want to hear the premise of, of Kindergarten Cop, along with the fact that Arnold Schwarzenegger is the lead actor, you would probably, you know, ask, how, how could this movie ever get made, you know? In, in reality, the movie's a lot of fun, and it's entertaining. It's probably Schwarzenegger's best non-action film, even though there is a little bit of action and he does a great job with his role as a substitute teacher you know the plot's engaging enough to keep the action cop movie fans interested but the classroom scenes are what makes the film and the action interaction between the kids and Schwarzenegger is just hilarious and I can't tell you the amount of times my friends and I would mimic Schwarzenegger's voice you know it's not a Duma it's not a Duma uh, you know, things like that. Years, you know, years later, thanks to the internet, there would be these amazing prank calls, you know, like, who are you? Or who is your daddy and what does he do? You know, things like that. So definitely check out Kindergarten God. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm all right. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I want to have them answered immediately. Okay. Who is your daddy and what does he do? Who? Who is your daddy? Who are you talking about? Who are you? Well, who are you? I'm Detective John Kimball. Hey, this is a motel. I'm a cop, you idiot. I'm Detective John Kimball. Well, if you're a cop, you idiot, come over here and talk to me, okay? You I don't know who son of a is, bitch. And I don't know what he does. This is a switchboard at the Gator Lodge. Stop it! I don't stop nothing, you idiot. Stop it! Hi. You son of a bitch. How are you? I'm Detective John Kimball. Charles Kimball? Yes. This Cotton's Barbecue. Ice with Charles Kimball? Yeah. Ice with somebody named Charles Kimball. Charles Kimball. Um, so could you describe Charles Kimball? Yes. Could you tell me how Mr. Kimball looks? 
I'm Detective John Kimball. Detective? Oh, he's a Detective John Kimball. Yeah, hey, I'm a police officer. Oh. I'm a cop, you idiot! I'm Detective John Kimball. Um, excuse me, um, sir, but this is Cotton's Live you. This is not a police station. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I want to have them answered immediately. Who's this, Dave? I'm Detective John Kimball. Yeah, sure you are. I'm a cop, you idiot! I'm Detective John Kimball. Well, how about come over here and I'll whoop your goddamn ass? How about that shit? Yeah. All right. You son of a bitch. That's great, man. Call me that. You got a problem? Get over here. Otherwise, get off of the phone and quit being an idiot. But I hope you leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach. I will. Bye. Thanks for calling Hitter San Jose. This is Kay. How can I help you? How are you? Good. First, I would like to just get to know you. Get to know me? Yeah. Well, I'm... Sorry. No. You son of a bitch. What? Stop whining. Stop whining? Yeah. I'm not whining. What are you talking about? Who are you? I'm someone that works at this restaurant. <laughs> you lack discipline. What? You lack discipline. Do I like discipline? Yes. You need to call a different line. This is Hooters. You don't call here talking like that, all right? Number three is Moneyball from 2011. And you might be thinking, this is a baseball movie. This is a sports movie. Actually, it's more of a workplace movie than anything because you're seeing the behind-the-scenes workings of a general manager that's running a baseball team. So it's definitely a workplace movie. And I had read the book Moneyball years before it was adapted into a movie. And being a huge baseball fan and very much interested, you know, kind of in the inner workings of a baseball team, the book was just fascinating and really gave an in-depth account of Billy Bean and the Oakland Athletics. So when I heard about the, that the book was going to be made into a movie, I was totally apprehensive because most sports movies have tons of like on the field action, not really behind the scenes, you know, business side of the game. However, totally pleasantly surprised about how entertaining the film was, even without wall to wall baseball action. And I remember seeing it in the theater with uh, this with a friend who was kind of a casual baseball fan at the time, didn't really follow the game as closely as I did. And he said that he thought the movie was going to be better after, you know, the first viewing. And I vehemently disagreed with him because, one, he didn't follow baseball or the A's back in 2002 or 2003, you know, when the movie was supposed to take place. Therefore, he didn't have the historical knowledge to reference. And, two, he didn't know half the players who, were, who played back then. And so, three, he obviously didn't understand or care to understand the role of a general manager for a team. It was his loss, not mine. So my two favorite scenes involve the trading deadline where Billy Bean, who was of course played by Brad Pitt, outmaneuvers the other general manager and puts, you know, puts on these smoke and mirrors routine to get the players he wants and keeps the same player away from other teams that are interested in one being my beloved San Francisco Giants. And then the pre-draft meeting in the beginning of the movie between the old school scouts and player personnel is just classic stuff, you know, just terrific. And uh, so even if you're not into baseball and you're just into um, just a well-structured movie, you'll, you'll still like Moneyball. Guys are just talking. Talking la 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 like this is business as usual. It's not. We're trying to solve the problem here, Billy. Not like this. You're not, you're not even looking at the problem. Well, we're very aware of the problem. I mean... Okay, good. What's the problem? Look, Billy... We all understand what the problem is. We have to okay, replace... Okay, good. What's the problem? The problem is we have to replace three key players in our nope. lineup. No, what's the problem? Same as it's ever been. We've got to replace these guys with what we have existed. No, nope. what's the problem, Barry? We need 38 home runs, 120 RBIs, and 47 doubles to replace. The problem we're trying to solve is that there are rich teams and there are poor teams. Then there's 50 feet of crap, and then there's us. It's an unfair game. And now we've been gutted, like organ donors for the rich, Boston's taking our kidneys, Yankees taking our heart, and you guys are sitting around talking the same old good body nonsense, like we're selling jeans, like we're looking for Fabio. We got to think differently. We are the last dog at the bowl. You see what happens to the runt of the litter? He dies. Billy, that's... A very touching story and everything, but I think we're all very much aware of what we're facing here. You have a lot of experience and wisdom in this room. Now, 
You need to have a little bit of faith and let us do the job of replacing Giambi. Is there another first baseman like Giambi? No, not really. No. Not and if there was, could we afford him? No. No. Then what the fuck are you talking about, man? If we try to play like the Yankees in here, we will lose to the Yankees out there. Boy, that sounds like fortune cookie wisdom to me, Billy. No, that's just logic. Who's Fabio? This is a shortstop. This is a shortstop from Seattle. Yeah, this is no time to push the panic button. Number two is 9 to 5 from 1980. This movie is way ahead of its time, especially with all that's going on today. Um, it, the movie was funny. It was smart. It was really well done. And, you know, you think of this great line that Jane Fonda says, and she's like to uh, Franklin Hart, who is played by Dabney Coleman. She's like, you're a sexist, egotistical, lying, hypocritical bigot. And then he replies with, so I have a few faults. Who doesn't? Is there any reason to kill me? This is during their famous fantasy scenes that they're having while they're smoking marijuana, which I had no idea what they were smoking back then when I was five or six watching this movie that my mom had taped off TV. And I'm pretty sure she just uh, didn't bother to explain why they were laughing so much. And just, you know, things just go over your head when you're a kid and you don't even bother to really think about it. But I had absolutely no idea what Jane Fon was. Jane Fonda was talking about when I, you know, first saw the movie when I was, you know, six or seven years old, but it sounded interesting. And I'm pretty sure my mom taped this off CBS one Sunday evening and, and forgot about it. And then one day I pulled out a VHS tape and thought it was Charlie Brown. I think it was uh, Flash Beagle, which is, of course, Snoopy impersonating Flash Dance. And I soon was watching 9 to 5, and I couldn't fully grasp, you know, like the sexual harassment angle of the movie at a young age, but I loved the schemes that the female leads, Dolly Parton, Jane Fonda, and Lily Tomlin, were pulling to get even with their miserable boss, played by Dabney Coleman. And as I got older and continued to rewatch the film, the jokes became funnier, and I finally understood a lot of the scenes I didn't get at, at, at the time. So, again, this movie still holds up well, and I highly recommend checking it out. Judy, you've got to help me. That mob has gone crazy out there. They're trying to kill me. Well, why would they want to do a nasty thing like that? I don't know. I'm not such a bad guy. You're a sexist, egotistical, lying, hypocritical bigot. So I have a few faults. Who does? Number one. Especially for my profession, it has to be Office Space from 1999. And I repeat, I quote this movie all the time, especially this line, which is, I'd say in a given week, I probably do about 15 minutes of real, actual work, which is a great line. <laughs> As someone who works in the tech industry and spend most of his work life in a cubicle, there really isn't a funnier work movie than Office Space. And I first saw this movie when I was in college, and while I found it really funny, I didn't really fully appreciate the brilliance of this movie until I started working full-time. And Mike Judge is just a genius, and would he turn this kind of like, this was the impetus, which eventually became the show Silicon Valley, which is, we've talked about this a lot. I mean, it's too close to home, and people that don't work in Silicon Valley or the tech industry might think it's completely farcical, but it's not. A lot of it, a lot of the crazy stuff is pretty much true but back to office space there are so many classic things that every person that works in a tech job can relate to those stupid tps reports or something along those lines or the bobs or some sort of consulting firm that comes in uh looking to restructure the company you know i love when when they're talking when um <laughs> the main character is basically doesn't give a shit doesn't care if he gets fired that's when he when he said he d he does about 15 minutes of actual work and then they're conferring with each other and they're just saying yeah that's just a straight shooter with upper management written all over him and, and he doesn't even give a shit about his job <laughs> so and then of course there's Lumberg. Uh, um yeah i need you to come in on saturday yeah uh in any movie with the character name of Michael Bolden, you know, that no-talent ass clown, is a winner in my book. And and just the indignant, you know, how, how indignant he gets when, when he's like, well, why don't you just change your name? He's like, why should I change? He's the one that sucks, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, terrific, terrific movie. Uh, really didn't do well at the box office, but it has turned into a total cult classic. And especially with the tech industry just incredibly booming, uh, it, it's it's an all-time classic for someone in that field. Hi, Bob. Bob? Pretty much go ahead and grab a seat and join us for a minute or two. You see, what we're actually trying to do here is we're just, we're trying to get a feel for how people spend their day at work. So if you would, would you walk us through a typical day for you? Yeah. Great. Well, I generally come in at least 15 minutes late. Uh, I use the side door, that way Lumberg can't see me. <laughs> and uh, 
And after that, I just sort of space out for about an hour. Tell him uh, Space out? Yeah. I just stare at my desk. But it looks like I'm working. I do that for uh, probably another hour after lunch, too. I'd say in a given week, I probably only do about 15 minutes of real, actual work. Uh, Peter, would you be a good sport and indulge us and just tell us a little more? Oh, yeah. Let me tell you something about TPS reports. Uh, TPS the thing is, Bob, it's not that I'm lazy. It's that I just don't care. Don't, don't care? It's a problem of motivation, all right? Now, if I work my ass off and Initech ships a few extra units, I don't see another dime. So where's the motivation? And here's something else, Bob. I have eight different bosses right now. Uh, beg your pardon? Eight bosses. Eight? Eight, Bob. So that means that when I make a mistake, I have eight different people coming by to tell me about it. That's my only real motivation, is not to be hassled. That and the fear of losing my job. But you know, Bob, that'll only make someone work just hard enough not to get fired. Would you bear with me for just a second, please? OK. What if, and believe me, this is so <laughs> hypothetical. But what if you were offered some kind of a stock option equity sharing program? Would that do anything for you? I don't know, I guess. Listen, I'm going to go. Uh, it's been really nice talking to both of you guys. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yeah, the thanks. pleasure's all on this side yeah. of the table, trust me. Good luck with your layoffs, all right? I hope your firings go really well. Okay. Thanks a lot. Great. Yeah. Wow. Now, we had a chance to meet this young man, and boy, that's just a straight shooter with upper management written all over him. Ooh. Yeah. All right, I have a bunch of extras. So I'll go through them quickly. Waiting, which is a terrific movie. I think Keith Rochford and I talk about this a little bit, about a restaurant, one of the early Ryan Reynolds films. Do not send your food back. <laughs> and watching this movie, you'll understand why. Uh, Wall Street. Wall Street was on my list, and then other, other movies came up. But, uh, yeah, if you want to, the inner workings of uh, working with the stock market and just the <laughs> greed is good and, and all that, nothing changes. Uh, Super Troopers, you want a fun, farcical look at being a highway patrolman? Super fun, no pun intended. Uh, UHF with Weird Al Yankovic, I've always liked this movie, and it's about, uh, they work, they take over a small UHF uh, television station, and let's see, Anchorman, right along, right along those same lines, of course, Ron Burgundy and Will Ferrell. The Devil Wears Prada, I'm pretty sure Samantha talks about this one, but this is terrific, about working for a fashion magazine. Dirty Work with Artie Lang and Norm MacDonald, where they kind of open up a revenge to hire business. Double Indemnity. The, double Indemnity. <laughs> it's easy for me to say. I, this one should have been on the list. I mean, it was tough to leave off. But it's it's a tricky one. Because, yes, he works for an insurance company, but it's kind of more than just that. So it's not a typical workplace movie, but definitely worth mentioning. Lifeguard with Sam Elliott, where he's, guess what? He plays a lifeguard. But it's a good movie. And who's got a better voice than Sam, Sam Elliott? Mannequin. You remember Mannequin? Yes, with Kim Cattrall, Andrew McCarthy, and of course, Estelle Getty, where Andrew McCarthy works at a shopping... It's kind of like a Macy's, and uh, even though it's not called Macy's. And, of course, the mannequin comes alive, and he does all these store window um, displays, and so it's in a store. That could definitely be a workplace movie. Office Christmas Party. We might get to this a little bit later when we do our party movies, but of course it takes place in an office, and, and one of the better comedies come out in the last few years with Jason Bateman, Jennifer Aniston, and T.J. Miller. Horrible Bosses. It says it all. Jennifer Aniston's in that one too, along with Jason Bateman. The Solid Gold Cadillac. This is a fun movie with Judy Holliday where uh, she owns a share of stock. She goes to a stockholders meeting and, and asks all these actually great questions but annoys them because they're used to just doing procedure like normal. And uh, she ends up, ends up running the business because everyone <laughs> ends up liking her. So The Slam and Salmon. This is the uh, Super Trooper guys, the Broken Lizard crew, where they work in a restaurant, sort of like waiting. And the last one, it's in the title, Employee of the Month, with Dane Cook and Dak Shepard and Jessica Simpson. They kind of work in a Costco, and Harlan Williams is in it, and uh, Andy Dick. It, it's a fun movie. Not a great movie, but it's a Comedy Central type movie. All right, we have tons of guests. We have tons of movies. Let's get into it right now. All right, we're back with Keith. Welcome back, Keith. 
Thanks for having me back, Brian. I appreciate it. So I hate to do this to you, but we're going to take you back to work, and we're going to talk about our favorite workplace movies. Um, you're great at the top five list, so I want to hear what you came up with again. All right. So the difference on this one between a couple of the other ones that you had asked me about, mm -hmm. um, this one I came up with quite a few oh, good. honorable mentions plus a top five. So. Okay, great. To me, one of the classic, and this is just honorable mention, one of the classic workplace movies was 9 to 5. Oh, great. Oh, one of my favorites. That was an, I, I don't even know if it was HBO at the time, but it was a cable staple where I remember when cable first came to where we lived in the south side of Chicago, and it was just called On TV. Mm. So it was basically you flipped a switch to On, ah. and you had the, the one cable channel with whatever movie was being shown. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and that was always on, but we would always watch it. So that one I loved growing up as a kid. Uh, another honorable mention is more of a current movie, uh, The Devil Wears Prada. Oh, that, that's a very uh, that's one of Samantha's favorite movies. Yeah, it was one of the ones that I probably would never have guessed of myself watching, but my wife was watching it, and I sat down and was just totally drawn in by just the way Meryl Streep played the, the boss and then just the, the switching of the way the Anne Hathaway character was. It was done really well. Uh, another one of my honorable mentions still is uh, Trading Places. Definitely, definitely. And I love the nod to Trading Places and Coming to America. Yes. Yeah, when, when the, the two brothers are uh, homeless in that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's that was the, always cool. The Duke brothers. Yes, yes, that was it. And the last honorable mention, being a music person, was uh, High Fidelity. I know it's not all set in the workplace, but a lot of it was in the record store that I always felt that I was visiting when I was going to my CD stores on the north side of Chicago. And there's always that Jack Black guy there, you know, that, that mocks your every, every uh, purchase. Especially for me at the time that I was there, because this was in the 90s and they were playing any kind of alternative music that they could. Now I'm in the, the dollar bin looking for any kind of hair metal or Kiss. thrash metal yeah <laughs> you know if it if it was on you know megaforce or roadrunner i'm grabbing it or if they had long hair or i'm grabbing it and it's all a buck i'm like and they'd look at me and kind of snicker i'm like okay whatever yeah exactly i'm just glad it's cheaper so. it, exactly i'm not paying full price <laughs> that's right <laughs> all right so my number five um makes me never want to eat out at a restaurant again and that's waiting oh this is so underrated this is such a funny movie and it's really before ryan reynolds became a huge star yeah it was and and it, it to me it was more of a, a an ensemble movie because yeah. he wasn't the main focus in it no yeah dane cook plays actually one of the cooks <laughs> yeah he does and and was it uh anna was ferris it justin long justin long anna ferris yeah yeah there was a bunch of different people yeah, really, really a good one. But yeah, it, it, I always think of that that movie when I, I go out to a restaurant. I'm like, no, just don't, don't send your food back. Never. I don't Never even care if they screw up. Even if they screw up, I'll scrape it off. I'm not sending it yep. back. Yeah. <laughs> Or, or never go in at 10 minutes before they close. Yep. You know, no, and just it. don't be mean or rude to your to your server, you know? It's not worth exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It doesn't work for you. It won't work. Another one, one of the older cable staples for me was uh, Gung Ho. Oh, a great one. Michael, Michael Keaton. Keaton. Yes, yes. And uh, you have, I think, Clint Howard, which is Ron Howard's brother's in it. I want to say Tom Cruise's first wife's in it. He plays Michael Keaton's girlfriend. Is that Mimi Rogers? Mimi Rogers. And then he, she's yes. actually the one that got him into Scientology. And, oh, um, oh uh, Getty Wananabe, who, of course, played Long Duck Dong in 16 Candles. Yeah. Really, I, I, that was one of my favorites growing up. Really underrated. I love Michael Keaton. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that movie. It was, it was, again, always on on the cable. So we, I'll leave it on. If it was on right now, I'd probably have it on in the background. So. Yep. Great pick. Uh, my number three, Empire Records. Yeah, what a, what a that you know that movie reminds me of the '80s so much, and a, and a great soundtrack. Oh my god! All every time I hear, God, I'm blanking on the ACDC song. If you want blood, too. I think right. Yes, if you want blood. Yeah. I was going to say it's a long way, but it's it's if you want blood. As soon as I hear that song start, that's all I picture is him playing the drums in that song. Yes, it's so good, and uh, yeah, that's actually one of my favorites. That might be my favorite song on Off Highway to Hell.
Uh, number two is probably one of the one of the workplace movie classics is Office Space. Yeah, that's my number one, and especially being in the tech industry and dealing with cubicles and not necessarily TPS reports, but so many amazing lines in this. And it's really it's become a cult classic because it didn't do well in the theater. No, it did not. And there was Mike Judge, right? Yeah, did, exactly. Did, was it? Beavis and Butthead and King of the Hill. And actually, have you watched Silicon Valley? I've seen it every once in a while. That I've seen a couple episodes of it. So it's kind of too close from home from here because that's this is where I am. But it is amazing how they nailed it. Like the, a lot of the stuff that seems absolutely ridiculous, uh, we deal with every single day. There are people just like that. So yeah. And, and, and that probably explains why that one is your number one and why my number one is number one because I've spent my entire work career in retail uh -huh. and that was clerks there you go exactly what a, what an amazing what a fun movie but it's oh it's so well done and i can't can't even say how many times in a day i've thought of you know this job would be great if it wasn't for the customer that's right <laughs> you know, it still goes through my head i've got a friend that i've known since i started in retail that him and i still can quote lines to one another you know you're having a bad day we'll call one another and just quote it back and forth because we both still do retail. And so actually, me, that could have been one of the black and white movies. I think someone would have picked that because, you know, having a, a 90s movie in black and white was pretty, pretty mind blowing. Yeah, that's true. That's probably one of the few black and white movies that I will consistently watch all the time. Yeah. But yeah. The sequel, not so much. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, it was okay to see the characters again. It was kind of like a warm hug of visiting them, but... Not what I want to see all the time. So yeah, that's one where you know the, if you wait too long, it, you're going to miss the initial magic. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, great picks, great picks. Thanks so much, Keith. No problem, anytime. All right, we're back with DJ Metal Mike. Welcome back. Hey, brother, what's going on, man? Thanks for having me. Yeah. Truly honored. Absolutely, always. and we we got your nephew Kane on, and welcome back. Yeah, it's a hey, family man. thing, dude. We yeah. love it. We love it. So, again, as you guys know, they have their own radio. Uh, actually, Mike's a part owner at ThatMetalStation.com. Yeah, I'm, which, a, I'm kind of a big deal. He is a big deal. And he's got two shows on uh, ThatMetalStation.com. Once on Tuesdays from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. And then on Friday from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. Eastern. And not to be left out, DJ Kane also has two shows as well. One on Sunday from 6 to 9 Eastern. That's p.m. And then Thursday from 3 to 7 p.m. all Eastern time. So definitely check them out. Support Metal. And uh, and definitely join the chat room because they will take requests, I believe. And, oh, yeah. and also we love having metal discussions like, you know, or, and, and not just metal, but hard rock or anything, really. You know, we love the banter back and forth and people, you know, you know, I give my opinion. They give me their opinion. It's cool, you know. Absolutely. It's it's a nice little community, and uh, this is how you meet people. All right. Well, speaking of meeting people and working with people, we're going to get into our favorite workplace movies. Now, this could be all over the place because you, of course, have your traditional workplaces, but then there's maybe places that aren't so traditional. So I'm, I'm curious. Metal Mike always comes up with a tremendous list. So let's see what he's got for us today. Well, thank you, brother. I appreciate that, Well, it's man. true. All right. Cool. My number one, Clark's Hands Down. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said earlier before on an earlier episode, that movie kind of spoke to me. It was just like, oh, shit, I, I live this you know, at the time, which, you know, it's funny because I quit th that profession to go into nursing. So but it was something I could totally relate to. I know it was something that your dad, um, yeah. my older brother, David Tyler, a.k.a. Scapegoat, could totally relate to because he worked at a fucking convenience store mm. when that movie came out. So, For a good majority of his life. Actually. Yeah, it was, a, it, you know, so it was totally something that we as a family almost could relate to. Love that film. Well, that and, and, the, and the stories you have from just the random right. people that come in. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. I could tell you some stories about some of the crazy shit my brother and I saw. Yeah. It was just nuts. But, um, yeah, I love Clerks. I mean, everything about it. I mean, obviously, the, 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 the awesome witty dialogue of kevin smith i mean there's just so much about that movie you know the whole 37 dicks thing cracks me up every time i think about it you suck 37 dicks right hey make sure you don't suck any dick on the way to the parking lot and the guy starts walking away. hey get back here it's just so funny man i love that movie oh perfect uh, number two i got is clerks too ah. I mean, kevin in my opinion did something that i didn't i was kind of leery i'm like 
Kevin, what are you doing, man? And I feel he pulled it off. I thought Clerks too was a great movie. Even with the crazy musical dance number, it yeah. still worked for me, man. My number three is Office Space. Yeah, gotta be. I mean, that's my number one. Oh, God, dude, that movie's so hilarious. Can I hit my stapler? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the whole thing, Mike Judge, it's 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 a masterpiece. And mm-hmm. in fact, I'm ranking these things, but to be really honest with you, Bri, I could have easily put Office Space number one. Oh, I mean, sure. This could be like, you got one, one A, and one B. Absolutely. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, seriously, they're all great films. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, if you work in any sort of office environment, I mean, this it's <laughs> it's amazing how much it comes up, you know, the, the, whether it be oh, t- sure. TPS I mean, reports. Me, like, I'm yeah. a nurse, but there's things I can relate to, like the fucking copy machine. Yeah. Is, you know? Oh, I can totally relate to that. One of the exercises that you're supposed to figure out what you would want to do if PC load letter. What the fuck does that mean? Not again. I... Why does it say paper jam when there is no paper jam? I swear to God, one of these days I I I just kick this piece of shit out the window. You and me both, man. The thing is lucky I'm not armed. Piece of shit. My next on my list is nine to five. Classic workplace movie. Kind of ahead of its time, in my Way opinion. Way ahead of its time, especially considering what's going on today, you know? Yeah, and I thought Dabney Coleman was hilarious. <laughs> it's, it, it's just a funny movie. Dolly Parton was great. Everybody was great in the film. It's a very funny film. I remember watching that with my parents as a kid. My mom and dad just laughed their ass off. And uh, Dabney Coleman, what a great actor. Oh, yeah, and the three of them it's together, incredible. you know, getting, I believe that's Dolly Parton's debut, and Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda, just it's great. The, the chemistry with all three of them is terrific. Another great work movie for me, and one that I don't know if will be on your list or not, uh, Broadcast News. Oh, that's a great pick. Didn't even think about that one. That's a tremendous yeah. pick. Uh, great pick. I mean, you, ha- you got William and Hurt. Albert uh, Brooks. Albert Brooks, who I absolutely love. Yeah. Er, and then, of course, uh, Holly Hunter. Holly Hunter, yeah. It's a James L. Brooks movie, so if you like a lot, you know, as good as it gets, or um, uh, what's the one? Terms of Endearment. You're going to like this movie. I think it's a movie that was kind of ahead of its time, especially when you consider where media has gone. Yeah, way before like cable television, you know. Um, and actually, don't forget, Jack Nicholson's got a hell of a bit role in it, too. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yes, he does. And and the whole, like, just the way the media has gone and the direction it's gone in, it was very in my opinion, prophetic. Oh, yeah, it's great to watch now because, yeah, at the time, they're thinking, oh, stuff like this isn't going to happen. It's happened, so. Well, there's that line he tells her, I got promoted for things like that. And yeah. I'm like, oh, shit, you know, like, you know, and I don't want to give anything away for a movie that's 30 years old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely <laughs> worth checking uh, yeah, out. Check it out, folks, if yeah. you've not seen it. It's yeah. outstanding. Totally. My number six is Swimming with Sharks. See, I've never seen this. Okay, explain it. Oh, dude. It's got Frank Whaley in it, and he plays an assistant to Kevin Spacey. Now, I know Kevin Spacey, yeah, you know, apparently maybe he wasn't acting in this film because he plays the boss from hell. Right? Ah, he, he, you know, it takes place in Hollywood, and he's an assistant to Kevin Spacey, and Kevin Spacey is an absolute bully and a prick in this film. It's a fantastic film, though. It's great. Because what ends up happening, I don't want to give anything too much away, but I can tell you this much. Frank gets so tired of his abuse that he ends up kidnapping him. Oh, wow. And torturing him. It almost sounds like a non-comedic uh, Horrible Bosses. Yeah, it's got yeah. some funny parts to it, though. But yeah, yeah it's, it, it does it's, have uh, similarities to that, except it's darker. Yeah, much darker film. So yeah. you've seen it? Oh yeah. What'd you think of it? I thought it was awesome. Yeah, it is a great film, man. Another one I threw in there was His Girl Friday, just an absolute oh, yeah. classic film, and it's it, you know takes place in a newsroom, it's workplace, so I counted it. One of my favorite uh, Cary Grant movies. I absolutely love that movie. It's also considered one of the uh, fastest paced movies ever. I mean, just dialogue oh, wise, nonstop. It's like the uh, all the actors in it are just clicking, you know, boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. It's Total just rapid great. fire. Yep. Yeah. Uh, another one I think maybe you'll appreciate, my friend, is the Hudsucker Proxy now, with the Coen brothers. I mean, you got you got yes. Tim Robbins. Yeah, Tim you Robbins. Got Tim Robbins. Yep. You got Paul Newman, who I absolutely love. Yep. And and you got um, a, an actress, Jennifer Jason Lee, and in this she plays a character. She's a she's a newspaper writer um, that's writing a story about 
Tim Robbins. And she does the best, like, it's a character obviously inspired by Catherine Hepburn. Mm -hmm. She's got Mm -hmm. the voice and the mannerisms down. Really great actress. Very underrated actress as far as I'm concerned. Um, I guess it's in her blood, though, because Vic Morrow was her father. Yeah. Good call. So I really do like that movie a lot. I mean, it's kind of weird, but you know what, Coen Brothers movie isn't weird. That's true. But Great I point. dig it. I really liked it a lot. Cool. What, what'd you think of it, Brian? You oh, like I, it? it's been years. I need to revisit it, and that's why I love having you on because you make me think revisit movies I haven't seen in a long time. Awesome. Yeah. All right, dude. Uh, my number nine, High Fidelity. Oh yeah. Definitely. I mean, if you're a music yeah. lover, how can you not love this movie? That's I mean, right. it's got John Cusack, it's got Jack Black, it's just a really cool film. Um, I, it's it's funny in parts, it's serious in parts. It's just a great film, man. I yeah. love High Fidelity. Absolutely. Uh, I followed that up with another mu- movie that's got a music in an Empire Records. Yeah, I was about to Very say, if you, if you have High Fidelity, you got to have Empire Records. Yeah, I mean, another, th- uh, you know, uh, just a great film. Uh, of course, Liv. Tyler's in it, Renee's Welliger, mm-hmm. um, and oh, se- Rexy, you're so sexy. It's just a good movie, very funny movie. If you're a music lover, once again, if you're into music, you're going to like this, especially if you long for the days of the old independent record stores. That's right, and any movie that includes If You Want Blood, You Got It from ACDC has got my vote. Fucking right, that's the best part of the movie. <laughs> it is, dude. it's so good. <laughs> when, uh, what, what's the guy who owns it? Oh, yeah, I, I, I can picture him, but I can't. Yeah, I don't know his name. He, he's just like, you know, he goes back there, man, and just and he plays the drums right along with it. Yeah. Everybody in the store is rocking out. Yeah. yeah, it's such a great part. It is. My honorable mentions are, uh, and these are movies that I think Kane had mentioned to me earlier when we were going yeah. down this list, Super Troopers. Yeah, I figure I, that's I, a workplace. Oh, movie. hell yeah. The sequel that came out isn't bad. I mean, it doesn't match the mat- magic of the first, but it's still pretty well done, especially if you're a fan. Yeah, I like the sequel. I haven't yeah. seen the sequel yet. Not so, as good as the first one. But you guys funny. say it's worth checking out. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. I, I love it, man, especially at one part. Pull over. We're already pulled yes. over. <laughs> Can't pull over anymore. Because I'm thinking, man, if I was a cop, that's what I would do. Oh, just like, fuck with people. Them. Yeah. I wouldn't pull over to the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. right. i just mess with them, man. You know, uh, uh, gun ho. Oh, Michael great Green. one. Yeah, but the auto workers. Yes, Anchorman, the legend of Ron Burgundy. <laughs> of course. You are a smelly pirate hooker. Why don't you go back to your home on Whore Island? <laughs> and uh, Horrible Bosses. Yeah, definitely. And that's the end of my list. Well, again, thank you so much, guys, and, and thank you for bringing on DJ Kane as well. Okay, we're back with super producer Lindley. Welcome back. Thank you. So we're in the office. We're always in the office when we do we these. We're always in the office, So yeah. this is a perfect topic for us. <laughs> and you got a few for this one. You might come up with more than two, but you got okay. two main ones. I have two. Okay. Yeah. Which one do you want to talk about first? Um, well, let's talk about desks. Set? Is yes. it called Desk Set? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think yeah. it came on 57. Catherine, yeah, yeah, Catherine Hepburn, Spencer Tracy. Yep. They Definitely were in nine a movies typical, together. Typical, typical, they hate each other, mm-hmm. they love each other. Eventual scenario. I mean, mm-hmm. why I watched initially because I went to library school and it's she's a libra- she's a, like the librarian yes. of the company. And then he's bringing in, he's like a computer scientist, basically. Yeah, he's exactly. A, he's a hardware engineer or a computer scientist and he's bringing in the hilarious computers of the 50s where it just like took over entire rooms oh yeah <laughs> like spit out you know very like, pages of remedial things. data <laughs> yeah you know, so yeah i mean it's just it's just really really fun to watch i think it's yeah it's just a pleasure to watch um it's funny with technology how everything starts huge and then turns and into just smaller. like super yeah. small Right. But the yeah. phones actually, ironically, just became... They got bigger. They got... Yeah. Well, they got big, then they got super small, and now they're kind so of I think there's again. a joke in Austin Powers. Mm-hmm. Is it Austin Powers where he has a really tiny phone? Yeah. To, it's some movie. I want to say Austin Powers, but it could be a different movie where he's like trying... Like the phone is he so lifts tiny. It up. Like, I yeah. think it's still a flip <laughs> phone. <laughs> yeah. Like, flip phone. Like he's trying to your finger. Yeah. So that obviously did not go in that direction. Yeah. Thank God. But I love watching <laughs> movies like that where the the system's so antiquated like the, yeah. did you ever see the net with um sandra bullock a long it's like, time ago i think yeah, it came so out like 94 so 95 so right, they, right, right. the early internet and hacking and everything yeah. was really kind of funny that's so. funny or even hackers or, or no, no sneakers with um cindy portier and um, oh, robert redford okay. yeah, they play hackers and everything. that's it's funny. pretty funny uh, so in the other movie it's pretty obvious 
the other movie that I'm going to talk about? Yeah. Oh, Office Space. Yeah, because yeah. how can you? I mean, again, I love that movie. Mm-hmm. I love everything about that movie. The casting. I love uh, what the guy that created it. Mike the, Judge. Mike Judge. God, yeah. thank you. Love him. Yeah. Would marry him in a second. <laughs> love him. He's just like crazy brilliant. I love that he's the cameo he plays in it. Yes, um, he's the... Uh, he, he's the, the manager guy. of Jennifer Aniston and keeps telling her she needs to wear more pieces of flair. And she's like, how Chotchkeys. many pieces? Tchotchkes. <laughs> yes, I mean, that's just yeah. so amazing, the tchotchkes. And then the place across the street is something, oh, I can't remember yeah. in my head, but because there's an identical tchotchkes Flingers type. or something? Flingers yeah, or something yeah. Like that, yeah. <laughs> so good. We need to talk. Do you know what this is about? My uh, flair. Yeah, or uh, your lack of flair, because uh, I'm counting and I only see 15 pieces. Let me ask you a question, Joanna. Mm. What do you think of a person who only does the bare minimum? Huh, what do I think? Um, you know what, Stan? If you want me to wear 37 pieces of flair like your uh, pretty boy over there, Brian, why don't you just make the minimum 37 pieces of flair? Well, I think thought I remembered you saying that you wanted to express yourself. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I do. I do want to express myself. Okay? Then I don't need 37 pieces of flair to do it. All right? There's my flair. Okay? And this is me expressing myself. Okay? There it is. I hate this job. I hate this goddamn job and I don't need it. So yeah, that is just, and I just think it still is very relevant, even totally. though he, even his experiences were based on, I think like the late eighties when he was actually an engineer. Um, he was an engineer. Uh, did he live in Texas? I want to say like, um, I, I'm not sure where he was from. He actually did work in Silicon Valley, like before oh, really? it was actually Silicon Valley before it was the internet. It was basically when it was like chips and like whatever. IBM and yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. When it was called like why it was named Silicon Valley, right? Yeah. It was, it was silicone chips. Exactly. I believe. Which is always um, fun to watch one of the I'm... worst James Bond movies ever, which is a view to a kill <laughs> where, Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> I mean, I loved that movie when I was a kid. Is that the one with Duran Duran? Does yes. The song? That's why I loved it. And Christopher Walken basically <laughs> wants to, ruined Silicon Valley. Yeah. This is like 1985 or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the era that he actually exactly. worked in it. So Office Space is based on his actual experiences, mm-hmm. which then, when does Office Space in the late 90s it comes out, right? I think yeah, it's like, like 98, 98 99. 99. Yeah, exactly. And I think today it is still very, very relevant. Well, obviously, it's be, it, it didn't do well. Like it became, it's I know, a cult it classic. was a completely quiet yeah. hit, right? But I mean, so, I saw it in the theater. Yeah. Um, and we just cracked up at the, especially the initial scene where the, he's in traffic. I mean, just that whole thing, the guy listening to like the very the hardcore yeah. rap and then he like rolls up his window when the guy comes by to, I think either selling or trying to wash Yeah, the exactly. But also the grandma, like on the walker. He's going faster. Than like passing him in her walker. <laughs> Basically, yeah, he gets into like one lane because he thinks it's going to go faster than the yes, other lane. That always like happens. That happens always, yeah. And, so um, terrible, yeah. I can't remember his name, but, but the Indian guy where he's just constantly angry well, the whole time. he can't say his name right. Yeah, yeah. he, he says he, it. Nobody can pronounce it's, his it's name. It's so easy. It's like, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, also, the Nina Corporate Accounting, how can yeah. I help you? Nina Corporate Accounting, how can I help you? Nina Corporate Accounting, how can I help Sounds you? Sounds like someone's got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there's so, yeah, it's one of the best quotable movies, too. I think so. I think yeah. it's just like, really. I can never, that's something if you're passing it on TV, mm-hmm. I could never pass it up. I'd have to stop and watch it. Well, as we talk about, like, Mike Judge went on to produce Silicon Valley, which yeah. we, well, we all agree, like, the first couple seasons are amazing, but still too yeah, close to of, home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too, yeah, exactly. Well, I was th- talking to a lot of people in Nashville. They were kind of asking, like, is it like that? And it is. Like, that That stuff. It's a lot like the TV, yeah. that TV show, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Because yeah. he also did King of the Hill, right? Which yeah. Is, maybe he is from Texas. Because a lot of, show. yeah. So Because I believe Office Space takes place in Texas, too. Maybe. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah it might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but it's always funny because... Talk about typecasting. Lumberg will always be Lumberg, and he's God, in tons of stuff. I know. Yeah. yeah, he always will be. And um, I mean, I love that. What's the the main uh, guy? Well, the main guy is not. I mean, he didn't really go anywhere after that, really. He was in some things, but yeah, he's been in like Sex in the City, and yeah. I don't know what movies he's been in. But I love his buddy, the buddy with the the mullet, the nerdy guy, right? No, I mean, no, no, no. Oh, his neighbor. You, oh, his neighbor. Yeah, oh, he's, he's in a lot of stuff yeah. though. He was. Um, I know he was in Barely. <laughs> He played, <laughs> yes. Jeff, he played Jethro. Yeah, exactly. Was the remake of Jethro. Let me ask you something. 
When you come in on Monday and you're not feeling real well, does anyone ever say to you, sounds like someone has a case of the Mondays? No. No, man. Shit, no, man. I believe you get your ass kicked saying something like that, man. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, the guy that plays Milton. Oh, yeah, he's that in all sorts of everything, but yeah. what is his name? And I love that actor. It's just like anything he's in, I love. He played um, the real dorky guy in um, Dodgeball. Do you remember? Oh, he, yeah, he's yeah, 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 yeah. He but has, he's in everything. He's yeah. so good. Steven Root. Yeah, Steven good, Root, good yeah. memory. No, I know him. I mean, yeah. I know that actor. I really love him. Yeah, he's so, great. So, yeah, he's awesome. But Mr. Lumberg told me to talk to payroll, and then payroll told me to talk to Mr. Lumberg, and I, I still haven't received my paycheck, and he took my stapler, and he never brought it back, and then they moved my desk to storage room B, and there was garbage on it, and um, I don't well, appreciate why, why don't you go back down and I, sit at your desk? Mr. Lumberg should be here any talk minute. Mr. Lumberg. Wait, just go sit it, at your desk, but, okay? Okay, but I, I, I'm going to just... Any other workplace movies you can think of? Well, I won't say the one we just talked about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we quickly discussed nine I mean, to five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there would be more, but uh, no. No, those I'm are sorry. two good ones. My brain is dead. That's okay. Thank you, Winley. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're back with Samantha. Welcome back. Hello. And of course, we're at work. We so are at work. this is when we. Yeah, <laughs> oops. Yeah, but we do get breaks, folks. We're not just on the clock all the time. <laughs> um, so we were going through our workplace movies. Um, it doesn't have to be like a typical office setting. It can be yeah. any sort of workplace. So I'm curious what you came up with. Okay. Yeah. So. First off, I'm going to reveal here, I've never seen Office Space. Wow. So that's probably on your list or I mean, on our it's list. It's got to be number one if you're into any sort of um, cubicle work yeah. style. Yeah. I, I've, ne <laughs> I've never seen it. And when I was in college, I interned at this magazine mm -hmm. that had um, an Office Space themed Halloween party. Oh, really? I've never been so out of touch in my life. <laughs> I yeah, didn't I don't, know what was going on. I don't know what kind of character you would be <laughs> knowing you now. Like, I, yeah, because there, actually there aren't a lot of females in that movie. There aren't. It's Jennifer yeah. Aniston. And it's, yeah. I worked at like a home design magazine, mm -hmm. and it was in a built. It was in actually the Chronicle Books building oh, really? in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So we worked with all of the book editors mm -hmm. there, and so it was this whole building. Of mostly women, yeah, who are dressed up as male officers. Yeah, right. <laughs> the ones being the uh, the TPS. Oh, I, I can give you references, but you're not going to get it. But yeah, you should see it. I think you would appreciate it more now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah now that I've been in the workplace. And have you seen uh, Silicon Valley, the TV show? No, I refuse to watch that show. It is a little bit too cool. I mean. There's a lot of people, like people I've talked to that don't work in Silicon Valley. They're yeah. like, it can't be really like that. I'm like, yeah, it really is yeah, like that. that's why I don't want to watch yeah. it because I'm like, ill. Yeah. Like, but the first couple of, the first couple seasons are worth, will okay. make you laugh. Yeah. If it's funny. But yeah. Yeah. So I've never seen Office Space. And mm -hmm. so that's not on my list. Okay. So I had to go back and think of like, hmm, what are some favorites here? And when I was young, mm -hmm. I wanted to work in the fashion industry. Of course. So that was my idea of a dream workplace. Absolutely. It probably still is, right? Uh, not as much. No? Not really. It's faltering, and if you don't have, like, a huge Instagram following, then like, that's it. where the business is now. Yeah. So, yeah, all the magazines and stuff are just on social media. So when you first started, you were you were working or interning at a fashion magazine? or I, something? I interned at a... A home design. Okay, so magazine. close, like on the fringes of. I was on the yeah. fringe, and yeah. I realized I don't want to work in journalism. Got it. The dying industry. It is. So. It is. And yeah, I was too cynical. Well, I'm glad you made this choice so because I'm we, here yeah, now. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out perfectly. But my favorite workplace movie, therefore, is mm -hmm. The Devil Wears Prada. Of course, which is one um, of your favorite movies of all time in general. One of my favorite movies mm -hmm. of all time. Was that my favorite? Um, no, no, you picked wasn't. Pride and Prejudice. Pride yeah. <laughs> but your this, second favorite movie yeah. when we do episode 200 will be Okay, that. this is Runner Up. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it came out when I, when I was younger. So, it just really stuck with me. And it is, I don't care if you are not into fashion or think it's the plot is stupid. It is a legitimately hilarious yeah. movie. And I think it applies to a lot of people if you're getting into the workforce yeah. or... You know, you have dreams, and it's just the cast is awesome. It's so funny, yep. it's, and it's not like cheesy funny. It's just like dark, sarcastic. Yeah. Like Meryl Streep's character has like such this like biting like personality, mm -hmm. and 
Did you finally see it? I've seen no, I've seen it before. Okay. Like I've seen it a bunch of times. I'm thinking yeah. of something else then that you haven't. Probably seen. Pride and Prejudice, Probably. <laughs> <laughs> which is your favorite. But but uh, yeah, yeah, I thought even though it's funny because even though the movie is about kind of the devil who yeah. is the boss mm-hmm. and like it's this just place where all of the employees are scared mm-hmm. i still thought like it looked so fun to work there yeah. because there's the scene when Anne hathaway gets her makeover and then they go into the fashion closet mm-hmm. and then you have all of the samples that they get to yeah. use on their photo shoots and stuff and like that was my dream then that's where the the cheese factor i guess falls into it because mm-hmm. um you see, even though it feels miserable, it doesn't feel miserable. Where if it was day in and day out, you really yeah. don't get to experience that, yeah. what they're going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know people who like went into the industry, and it's it's stressful. Yeah, like, the hours are crazy, and it's not just like oh, we're gonna play with clothes, and then we're no. gonna travel to Paris. <laughs> yeah, it's not that. Yeah, it's not like that at all. You're not gonna meet the Prince Charming. That's a uh, other fashion designer. Yeah. yeah. Oh no! Well, he was was he a journalist or a photographer? I think he was a journalist. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and like I honestly, I did think I wanted to get into journalism, and I was a writer and mm-hmm. stuff. But I really liked the whole the styling side of things. Yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe I could do that one day. But no. and she was perfectly cast for that. Mm-hmm. Like the cast was really well done. And, yeah. And the the woman Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt yeah, she's is great. the best part of yeah. that movie. I yeah. think her and Meryl Streep are. Well, Meryl Streep, of course, because sure. she's the leading person. Yeah. But I think Emily Blunt just has the best role yes. there because she is, you can tell she just has this such, like, dry, like, cynical, and she's so just cranky, yeah. but she is the best at her job, yeah. really. So It's endearing at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why are you doing this to yourself if yeah. you're so miserable? But it's really like the life she wants That's for right. herself. Mm-hmm. And Anne Hathaway gets in the way with her That's upbeat personality. That's right. <laughs> so, but it's, yeah, it's a great... Great, yeah, great cast, and Stanley Tucci plays, like, the creative director yes. or art director, and is it's a, re- a cool set of yeah. different personalities and office things, and I always thought, oh, it'd be so cool to, you know, work, you have to take the elevator up to, like, the 20th floor or whatever, <laughs> and, you know, they see each other, and... Mm-hmm. They're all mean to each other. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're all very... Cat- I mean, it's a really a doggy dog business. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Which is tough. Yeah. So, that's... But it's uh, fun to watch. It's, it's fun. fun. Yeah. It's fun. It's hopefully going to be on, on TV during the holidays. It usually <laughs> is at this time of year, so... I have watch. it on DVD, but you don't have a DVD player. So I don't that, have yeah. a DVD player. But, yeah. So, that's my number one pick. Okay. And I will give a quick shout out to 9 to 5. Absolutely. You said it's one of your favorites. It is. It's definitely my top five. I did just see it for the first time recently, and I'm so sad it was the first time I saw it, Mm -hmm. like, in its entirety, because it's such a cute movie. And it's your traditional office uh, from way back when. Yeah, it really is. It's the... um, Oh, the typewriters. Yeah, yeah. the typewriters, and you have, you know, the, uh, the boss is in his office, and then all the ladies are outside. Yeah. Typewriters. It's very the madman uh, type. Yeah, of, Mad yeah. Men, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. As someone who didn't grow up during that time, like I am obsessed with Mad Men. Yeah. So to see how oh, it really was the same. It, yeah. The fifties and sixties through, but that came out in like nineteen nineteen eighty. Yeah. So, so it's probably you know seventy like film yeah. probably in the late seventies. So. Yeah. So it's very traditional and. Um, but it still but holds up today it about does. you know what they had to deal with. Um, and you gotta love the revenge factor, mm-hmm. and they all work really well together. Yeah, so, yeah. No and again, intended. it's like a really fun ensemble cast. Yeah. But you still have like I think a theme in most of these like workplace movies is you have you know the the person who's always trying to please the boss, yes. and like that horrible person who you just hate. Yeah, and then you have kind of the new person who gets in, and mm-hmm. they're you know slightly different, and you know the people who are just kind of miserable. Yeah. And, so there's all those types of characters That's throughout. Right. But yeah, quick shout out to that one. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good classic. Um, but yeah, those are my main two. Okay. I did want to just throw in, um, this isn't super traditional, but my idea of a, a lovely workplace is that 
that that is which is featured in You've Got Mail. Oh, yeah. Which is the bookstore that Ming Ryan owns. Yes. If I were... Which is called? A little, little shop. Shop Around the Corner. Shop Around the Corner. Yes. Okay. Which is a direct reference to the original yes. movie. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> I wanted to say Little Shop of Horrors. I know, I was like, you're going to do it. She's going to do it, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, if I were to win the lottery <laughs> or be able to retire young, I think I would open a bookstore. A little It'd boutique so, bookstore, yeah. So pleasant. Um, but, of course, that movie, again, she's getting run down by the, the Hanks big, exactly. his massive industry. Bookstore, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to throw that in. They've got a... It's just so cute, and... Small, little, mm-hmm. just a couple people working there. I and know. It's so calm and. <laughs> I mean, you still will find little bookstores like that uh, oh, yeah. every now and then, and they're great. And everyone should support those, like you know, music stores and the dying industries that that uh, are nice to still have. So. Yeah, interesting yeah. variety. Of yes. Choices for me today. Great job <laughs> as always. Thank you so much, Samantha. Yeah, you're welcome. We're back with my other brother Brian. Welcome back. Hey there. So we're in the workplace. We yes. often do these in the workplace. We do get breaks every now and then. <laughs> um, so we decided to this go. Counts as work though, right? Kinda. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we'll put it in our. Um, or toke or whatever. <laughs> Nobody's going to know what we're talking about. Inside dope. Yes. Anyway, so we, um, we're going to talk about our favorite workplace movies. Now, this could be right. any. I mean, it doesn't have to be like our workplace. It could be any sort of workplace. You know? yeah, yeah. If it takes place in a gas station, you could do The Jerk if you wanted to when you worked right. uh, with Jackie Mason. <laughs> yeah. He hates these cans. And so yeah. we could do something like that. But how many uh, did you come up with? I have a list of four, although I probably might talk and I might have some more honorable mentions. Sure. But, um, Actually, I just thought of one that maybe is an honorable mention is Clerks, which is, you know, a kind of quintessential yeah. workplace movie mm-hmm. if you're in retail. Though I never really worked retail like that, so mm-hmm. it didn't, like, really... I thought it was funny and a really, you know, clever movie or yeah. interesting, but it wasn't something that I directly related to. Mm-hmm. So. I believe Keith Rochford picked that because he, he does work in retail, and so that... Uh, it, I think it, it always depends on what, what resonates yeah. more with you. And, oh, you know what? Yeah. No, okay, yeah. so I just thought of a fifth one. See, this is why Again, this is good. So, uh, waiting... Which yes, is, which I, did, I didn't. Again, I haven't worked in a restaurant, but that movie was, was pretty hilarious it's, and raunchy and gross, and mm-hmm. makes me never want to eat at any restaurant again, <laughs> <laughs> at least for a little while, or especially not one that's like a you know like your TGI Fridays Chili's kind of. That's right. You know, that that kind of restaurant. I would. Uh, I didn't do it before, but I definitely don't do it now. I never send anything back. Even if they screw up, I like I'll eat it. I'll eat it because yeah. I'm not sending it back. Yeah, or, or, or something different. Or, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah, or don't. Don't be rude. Never be yeah, rude to anyone yeah. <laughs> serving food to you. <laughs> it's not me. It's you. Yeah, but, but it's actually, you, but it's, a <laughs> it's a great cast of, of characters that eventually became bigger uh, than that movie. So you had Ryan Reynolds, mm-hmm. Anna Ferris. Yeah, um, Justin Long's in it. He's really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's kind of the, the main, like the protagonist, right? More yes. Or less. Yeah. Well, Ryan Reynolds and and Justin Long, are right? Kind of the, the two. And, and then um, Dane you, Cook, right? Dane Cook plays a he's cook. Really. <laughs> and Louis Guzman. Louis they keep playing Guzman, this uh, yeah. joke game. Yeah. <laughs> we have to see it to, <laughs> yeah, to like it. And then, um, God, what was his name? The kid that was in Freaks and Geeks. Like the main. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a little bit older. Yeah, Yeah. so he's there. Yeah, Yeah. he's like the host or the one of the hosts. Yeah, yeah, like the early. Yeah, but yeah, there's it's it's definitely worth checking out. That one again. Yeah, it's. I think I've only seen it once, in fact, or maybe parts of it on rerun again. But Mm -hmm. yeah, it was. Yeah, it's a good one. I remember seeing it in the theater. I'm like, this is is my type of movie. This. I think I rented that one. I'm like, oh man, I wish I had seen this (laughs) sooner. You don't get movies like that anymore. I don't. It seems like or not. uh, You get raunchy comedies, but they're not like. No, they're just not funny or something. I forget who I was talking to about this, but yeah, comedies aren't... They're following the same kind of pattern now, where it's just like uncomfortable humor as opposed to like just funny. Yeah. And, and it's maybe I'm getting older, but it just is... I yeah. can't remember the last great comedy besides yeah. maybe like Super Bad or, or maybe yeah. The Hangover, but those are few and far between now. Yeah, where there's jokes or there's slapstick. But yeah. Now it's, now it's more like uncomfortable kind of slapstick yeah, almost mean spirited yeah yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah both of those yeah yeah so anyway waiting was one so that was my number five i guess good yeah. the rest are well yeah i don't think these are in, in any order i just listed them off off the top of my head um one is the apartment 
which is a classic movie. Uh, I think it was 1960 or something like that. Yeah, with, uh, Jack black Lerman. and white. Yeah, yeah, black and white era. Back mm-hmm. when your p- parents were living. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to bring it up now. So <laughs> Brian and I just had lunch, oh. and also Rachel was there, and mm-hmm. we were uh, talking about stupid things you say as a kid or things you believe as a kid. And so I always believed until last year, um, that <laughs> my parents grew up in black and white because all the TV shows from there are, are in black and white. And I finally asked them one day, like, when did color come into your life? And that's when they would uh, put me in a different school at that <laughs> point. Like, so, right, yeah, <laughs> he's going to be okay. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Wise guy, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so uh, The Apartment is a great movie with Jack Lemmon, Shirley MacLaine. Um, Fred, McMurray. Fred McMurray is yeah. kind of the... Well, the villain, he's a I jerk. Guess. He's yeah, a huge yeah. jerk. He's yeah. always usually a hero in other you know Disney movies. Yeah. Um, although, well, double indemnity, double indemnity is not. But before he started getting, I mean, he yeah. actually could play a heavy. Like yeah, it's true. So he kind of yeah. he kind of has both sides to him. But mm-hmm. yeah, he was good. Um, it's a it's a really modern take uh, for that era because it was kind of just coming out of the fifties, and it had to do with you know like workplace relationships mm-hmm. and sexual harassment and stuff like that. Definitely. So, very mad man. Yeah, very yeah. mad. It's really, a, yeah, it's good. So I, I recommend it highly. I agree. Um, Billy Wilder was a genius. When it yeah, came, yeah, I forgot that was Billy Wilder. Yeah. yeah. So pretty much anything Billy, Billy Wilder did is great. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but for a workplace one, that was good. Yeah, great pick. Um, Hudsucker Proxy, which is a Coen Brothers movie, and it's not, I don't think, a lot of times it's not really highly regarded as one of the, you know one of their better movies. And I think it was panned and mm. did really badly at the box office. So it's, it's kind of odd. Um, it's kind of like an allegory tale where it's, it's more like a storybook kind of movie instead of uh, it doesn't you don't you don't necessarily buy that it would really happen but it takes place in like the fifties although it looks like it could be like in the future or the fifties because mm. everything is like really like German expressionism Art Deco kind of architecture uh-huh. so basically um, I think that the owner of the Hudsucker Industries or something dies and there's a fight over who's going to take over the company and Paul Newman is the executive who's going to try and take over and but he needs uh, he needs a stooge to help him get his his uh, plan across so he he hires a guy from mailroom which is tim robbins to to be the ceo basically he's Ah. like a puppet ceo except the the funny thing is that tim robbins invents the hula hoop for for the purpose (laughs) of the movie he's the inventor of the hula hoop so the company takes off and does really well and then it kind of throws paul newman's plan out of whack Mm -hmm. and it's just like some so you know hijinks ensue it's a little bit odd um because it's not like a it's not like a typical workplace movie it's more like a like a Allegor- allegorical yeah. tale and, stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, and you're a big Paul Newman fan so I'm pretty yeah sure that so that, was, yeah. that helped a lot but yeah. Tim Robbins is great of the Coen Brothers movies it's more of a cult classic one rather than one of their like you know bona fide hits and then next I have High Fidelity which is yeah. not entirely uh, you know it's not really a workplace movie it's just a lot of it takes place at the record store I that, think that John Cusack yeah. owns so mm-hmm. it's kind of like that's the main setting and it's kind of really about his like his his love life and how it intersects with music. So right. it's, it's kind of, it is kind of, I don't know. It's, I feel like it's, it justified enough of a, a and, workplace movie. And if you like top whatever lists, I mean, yeah, it's, that's, 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 your, yeah, it's this your is that movie is like the inspiration for this podcast. Pretty this much. Like, very much so. <laughs> it um, could have been. It, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I had, if I had enough money to do whatever I want, I would open a record store for oh, my yeah. own that, yeah. pleasure. Just hang yeah. out with some friends. Exactly. And like, give yeah. shit about your music taste. Exactly. And, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the perfect movies scene and... where Jack Black is just like, um, he wanted, I just I just called to say I love you. <laughs> like, it's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, they're horrible. Those some of my customers. Yeah. It's, it's really funny. <laughs> Looking for a record for my daughter for her birthday. I just called to say I love you. Do you have it? Yeah. Great. We have it. Great. Can I have it then? No, no, you can't. Why not? Well, it's sentimental, tacky crap. That's why not. Do we look like the kind of store that tells I just called to say I love you? Go to the mall. What's your problem? Do you even know your daughter? There's no way she likes that song. Oh, oh, oh. is she in a coma? Oh, okay, buddy. I didn't know it was pick on the middle-aged square guy day. My apologies. I'll be on my way. Bye-bye. Like they really didn't care about yeah, selling it. Yeah, no, they didn't care. Like they didn't want to sell your record. Now, no. The book, for what it's worth, is based on a Nick Hornby book, I and mean, the book is really good as well. Okay, yeah. So you just don't have the music in it, so mm-hmm. you kind of have to imagine the music. Did you re- wait, did you see the movie first? Saw the movie book? first. Okay. Yeah, but the book holds. You know, like sometimes it's one is ruined or the other is ruined, but both are. They have they diverge in some places, but they're both pretty pretty darn good. Okay, I would say, but mm-hmm. definitely check out the movie. Yeah, yeah. Good. 
Definitely. Good cameo by Bruce Springsteen as well. Yes, <laughs> good point. Good Random. point. Just, Catherine Zeta Jones. Oh, uh, she's yeah. yeah. All, the, all of his past. Um, so he, the, yeah, the story is that he goes, he he's uh, he breaks up with his girlfriend, and then he decides that there's something wrong with his life because he keeps breaking up with with, with all his girlfriends, right. and he has to like go and make amends or like kind of reconcile why he did all this. So he's yeah. going around to, to all his back, past girlfriends and trying to figure out like what went wrong. Right. And, and they all have different reactions, as you might imagine. Yeah. Some of them are really <laughs> resentful, and some are trying to get back together with him. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of so. And in, in meanwhile, you know, he, he works at this record store, and mm-hmm. he's got Jack back, and I forget the other guy's name. Yeah, he's just kind of a just a, tag along. <laughs> yeah. So they, they work. <laughs> you know, they work at the record store, and they mm-hmm. play music, and they give customers a hard time. Yeah. I don't know. It's a great movie. It's, it's really one before. of my favorite. Probably my favorite John Cusack, or mm-hmm. one of one of them. Um, it's one of the, the Jack Black movies before he got huge. Yeah, like, yeah. Kind of a, a supporting, you know, player. Yeah, and he does perform know. at the end of that movie. Yes, but yeah, which is good. good. Yeah, yeah. So, what's your number one? All right. Pick? So, my number one is Office Space, and probably gotta everyone's going to mention this one. Mm-hmm. But God, if you work in an office job, this is like the quintessential office movie. I would Absolutely. Say. Um, and especially if you work in a tech company, <laughs> which I have done most of my career. Yes, <laughs> I just have my career. Yeah, it's uh, it's for me. I don't know. It's I'll let other people talk about it. I'm not, I'm not going to go into too much deal, detail. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, like if you have, if you've ever worked at any kind of office job, it's you know something will resonate. And I think it gets better with repeat viewing, and yeah. as it ages, it yeah. ages really well. Yeah, like, I mean, it was way ahead of its time. Yeah, I believe. It. Yeah, I. That's exactly. That's a great. It's a great point. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's some things that are just like timeless, even though like so. I think there's uh so they take the is it the fax machine yes. that they take out for a beat down <laughs> and the printer yeah <laughs> the printer yeah. yeah so like I mean I don't think this happens nowadays as much but I remember like you know a while back where like, technology would work a little bit but then it would be work enough just to frustrate the hell out of you yes and yeah. then you have other kind of like office frustrations mm-hmm. based on the, like the people you work with or your bosses or whatever and it's just like there was like a really cathartic scene to like have them go like take a printer out to a field and, and whack it with a <laughs> yes. bat and kick it and then there's like this gangster rap yeah like, playing it's going to be a gangster a soundtrack yeah. and it's just like it's it perfect. Great. It's brilliant. And just like even the intro when they're driving in traffic, you know, one's you yeah. know, uh, Michael Bolton, who is a great. Yeah, great. he's like listening to hip hop, and then the the guy wants to wash his window, so he's got to quickly roll up his window, and then um, uh, the the main guy, uh, Ron Ron Livingston, right? Yeah, yeah he yeah. Uh, he keeps he changes lanes, and then all of a sudden his lane stops. Yeah, and, <laughs> it's like yeah, you just and, can't get ahead no matter what you do. Yeah, and then and then the Indian guy just like is just so angry the whole yeah, time. Yeah, he just um, can't get it right. So I can't think of the guy's name. Um, yeah, which is a joke in the movie Milton, too. Milton. Oh yeah, the guy yeah. With the with the statement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. He just can't win, and eventually he yeah. gets his revenge. In the right. End. It's, it's, <laughs> sort it's of. Brilliant. Yeah, it's just uh, I, I, it really is the precursor to what Silicon Valley became. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, I think he drew a lot of the humor from Silicon Valley yeah. from that. Um, just extended it, modernized it, I guess, a little bit more. Totally, yeah. totally. But, that, but yeah. it also had an element of uh, what what you see in the movie Waiting, where Jennifer Aniston worked at a, at a restaurant, Flares. where like she had to, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> flare, where she had to wear I don't know, was it like twenty pieces of flare, flare. <laughs> which is a, which limited. is the minimum. Yeah. Which, <laughs> which you like more. You could do more. It's like, well, which, but I wore the minimum. No, but we like you to do. Literally, <laughs> literally brought it up because that's Mike Judge. It hit her boss. Is oh, Mike Judge. That's, that's so right. it's just a great. Uh, you know, a little cameo yeah. there. That does good. Yeah, really well done. And yeah, we have fun at work. Yeah. So this is this is always like an offshoot of what we do at work. Exactly. And in, in the game we always play is, have you seen this yet? And the the answer is always no. No, but I but then you'll shock me and you'll say like I've seen Twelve Angry Men or Mildred Pierce or Mildred. <laughs> yeah, I was like, where did that come from? But <laughs> so um, for this week's episode, we're going to talk about our favorite workplace movies. Now it doesn't have to be you know what you're used to like a tech cubicle setting it could be anything so mm-hmm. i'm curious how many movies did you come up with just one okay mm-hmm. and, and, oh okay so this this is the only one that came to mind <laughs> yeah okay which is odd um i feel like if we tally up all of the movies that i've talked about on this podcast uh-huh. my taste is just so weird <laughs> like we're inconsistent there's mm-hmm. no like so because the movie that i came up with um a is gonna out me as as incredibly hipster trash uh, <laughs> wow okay. no, not trash <laughs> In, incredibly refined taste uh it's called better drink, it's called drinking buddies okay i think i've heard of this yeah and okay. it came out in 2013 mm-hmm. 
Uh, it's like a kind of a mumblecore movie oh, sort okay. of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now explain for my older <laughs> listeners, what is mumblecore? Uh, I don't actually know. I had to look it up too when I was reading about this movie. I was like, oh yeah, the mumblecore film movement. But it's usually um, more naturalistic action mm-hmm. and dialogue. Uh, they're typically low budget, uh, emphasis on dialogue over plot and mm-hmm focusing on personal relationships with people in their 20s and 30s. Interesting. According to Wikipedia. Okay. Um, and I, I think I like those things because I am those things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my 20s and yeah. I really value my personal relationships with people and, right. and exploring those. Um, and so movies that do that too are always very striking to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so Drinking Buddies has Olivia Wilde, mm. Jake Johnson, who is most well known from being Nick on New Girl. Okay. And uh, Anna Kendrick and Ron Livingston. It's a good cast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really well cast. And the workplace element is that two out of those four people are co-workers at a brewery. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so mm-hmm. not the whole movie takes place in in and around the brewery, but it's like a central part of a lot of, there are a lot of scenes that do take place at the brewery, but then just the fact that they work at a brewery and that they drink a lot of beer basically is pretty prominent in the whole movie. Right. Um, it's funny you mention Ron Livingston because he's in one of the most recommended workplace movies of all time, <laughs> which is Office Space. Yeah. Yeah. So, which have you seen? Yes. Okay. So there you go. <clears throat> I have seen that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was what I like. I like this movie because I really like Olivia Wilde and Jake Johnson. <laughs> okay. And Anna Kendrick and Ron Livingston yeah, too. Yeah. But um, I like the. To a lot. I used to have like movie nights with my friends in college and we'd come over and watch random, usually mumblecore movies, and this is one of them. What about Thanks Killing? <laughs> <laughs> this is a different group of okay. people. I saw Thanks Killing in high school. Yes. Um, but what I thought was really cool about this movie was that all the dialogue was improvised. Mm. There was no like script. So okay. they told the actors major plot points that they wanted to have happen and where mm. they want the scene to begin and where they want the scene to end. Okay. And then they just sort of let them oh, go for it. Uh-huh. And all the beer that they were drinking during the production of the movie was real. Oh, okay. So yeah. they were basically just getting drunk and doing improv mm-hmm. and it became a movie. Really? Yeah, but it was, it was Cool, and it was like a complicated story about uh, relationships because the 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 cast is four people, and Jake Johnson and Olivia Wilde play coworkers at the brewery, and then Anna Kendrick and Ronald Stewart play their partners. Okay, and then it's just the four of them getting involved in various like couple related mm-hmm. conflicts and antics. So how is this over a few weeks, or is it like how does the I think it's, play out? Yeah, I think it's uh, not. A whole lot of time. It's I I think it's kind of ambiguous as to how long how much time passes okay. because uh, there's some they go on a trip at some point hmm. and then they come home and then their people are making like I I think and I haven't seen it since the first time that I watched it but I think it it does only take place over like maybe a month or two or something uh-huh. or a week or, or or it's not like years right. or anything but it's not also and like they stay employed at the brewery the whole time mm-hmm. okay so. yeah and they hang out there and it's a real brewery in chicago so that what, what's it called um revolution brewing all right yeah. see now next time you go to chicago if you ever go to chicago <laughs> i've been to chicago to, okay well now you have to, <laughs> you have to check Except out i was 15 so I wasn't uh, going you weren't to allowed to yes yeah. yeah yeah it might be on my list well this is a good pick because i love picks where i haven't seen the movie and you've yeah. been knocking out of the park lately with movies i haven't seen so. yeah for every uh shrek there is a there is a drinking buddy <laughs> and school of rock yeah. and, and things like that so. yeah Great. Well, thank you, Rachel. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're back with Malin. Welcome back. Hey, Brian. So, we're going to work, and uh, so uh, but we're always going to have fun <laughs> with it uh, and come up with our favorite workplace movies. Now, this could be anything. It doesn't have to be, you know, based on the workplace that you work in or that I work in as well. Like, it doesn't have to be a, a, a cubicle office type movie, but it could be, you know, whatever workplace that, that fancies your, your movie viewing, uh, you can pick that. So, I'm curious to hear what you came up with. Okay, so I've only got a few on my list, um, and yeah, I don't think they, they don't remind me of my work. You know, I was thinking, I, I don't know that I hunt out workplace movies so much, because I spend a lot of my time at work, uh-huh. and I don't necessarily want to go and sit in a movie <laughs> and watch somebody else work well that's why i think um, a lot a lot of people in our industry kind of shy away from silicon valley the tv show i have i i don't i i am totally with you on that mm-hmm. i 
one hundred percent. It looks like something I would be totally into. Yeah, I I can't even watch a preview of it or a trailer. I'm I'm scared. It's I'm too, too close. It, it hits too close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I haven't even given it a chance. I haven't even given it an un- honest chance. I mean, maybe it's something I would like totally relate to in the best way possible, but I'm just scared to get in there and like, oh, yeah. I will say the first two seasons are really well done. It, it kind of goes off the, not it goes off the deep end, but it, it, it's hard to keep up the quality for more than a couple seasons a lot of times. So um, uh, if you do watch, definitely watch the first couple seasons. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, good to know you're a, a survivor of the first two seasons. I, I was. Jumped in. <laughs> yes. Okay. So the the ones I picked. So first one, um, uh, Working Girl, because I just love Melanie Griffith and Sigourney Weaver Absolutely. going after each other. Yes. Um, and I think Harrison Ford is like Melanie Griffith. Oh, both of their love interests. That's actually. right. Isn't that right? Yeah. He yeah. Could, they kind of he kind of already broke up with Sigourney Weaver, but um, yeah, she still thinks there's there's something going on with him. Right. Yeah. There's that whole like Melanie Griffith doesn't get what's it doesn't understand the complexity of it first, and I guess Sigourney Weaver doesn't understand no, <laughs> the no. complexity of it at first either because she's kind of out of the loop and he's doing a really bad job communicating um, anything. And then, but it's Harrison Ford, for, so we end up forgiving him for being kind of um, uh, a bad male role model. That um, and then you've, it's been, the worst male role model is Alec Baldwin in that. So. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Yeah. So he's actually one up, during, yeah. you know, uh, 100. Uh, um, yep. But that's a fantastic movie. And actually, um, I haven't seen it in a while. But even just, you know, I, I put this on my list today as I was thinking about the uh, that we were going to talk. Um, and it, just thinking about it makes me want to watch it again because it's kind of so much fun to, I don't know, it's kind of totally formulaic but i don't mind i like seeing melanie griffith kick ass well that and has one of the best character actors and that's joan cusack <gasps> absolutely yeah absolutely with hair bare hair for days. oh yeah it's straight up <laughs> late 80s huge hair yes yeah almost to the ceiling oh, oh yeah my goodness so fantastic! Yeah, I want to see it. You know, I gotta go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn it on like definitely. Right now. You, you you that'll cheer you up immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got I've got some work from home to do. I think I'm gonna put that in the background while I'm doing that. Perfect. So that would be cool. Yeah. Um, my next one. Okay, nine to five. Absolutely. Um, I first saw this when I was a kid when I had no idea what you know they were. You know, me neither. Bitching and moaning about, yeah. like I was like, ah, just go to work and just do it. You yeah, know, I didn't get it. <laughs> oh, it's it's. I've talked about it a lot on this podcast because Samantha just finally saw it, and I think it's more relevant now than it was then. You know, that's how ahead of its time it was. Yeah, absolutely. It has become our national consciousness. Yeah, over like the last three years in a terrifying way. Although I find it easier to watch nine to five than I do sometimes to watch the news. Like I have to oh, sure. check out for like maybe a day or two at a time from the news, but yeah. I don't have that reaction to nine to five. It's a, it's, it's escapism for me at this point. Oh, sure. And, um, and, and they work so the, the actresses work so well together, especially considering it was Dolly Parton's first movie. And, uh, they, they have such a chemistry. And then of course you have to have a heavy and Dabney Coleman is the perfect, you know, yeah. uh, you know, hypocritical, uh, sexist bigot of a boss so yeah he's, yeah, he's perfect absolutely. i mean it, you, you know if only i could rem- like memorize that phrase i really wish i could okay my last one so taking a big left turn here um my last workplace movie brazil oh yeah yeah so um this one i just i just adore this movie but i haven't seen it in forever i've watched working girl in nine to five more recently but i haven't seen brazil in a long time i like the european longer cut because i guess uh, again i tend to go for the darker endings of films i don't know why i don't think i'm a dark person no you're not aspire to be (laughs) i aspire to be kind of dark and brooding i'm not um (laughs) but 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 i love brazil and jonathan price in it like He's uh, fantastic, and Michael Palin is in it. So it's and um, and De Niro. It's yeah, and Robert De Niro in yeah. this cameo, uh, really tiny cameo. Yeah, but um, 
yeah so it's and it's uh, this dystopian kind of uh view of the bureau the crushing bureaucracy the mindless and crushing bureaucracy of the workplace and as of um kind of uh government officiousness um with with no eye towards the humanity that's being affected right. by it um and it's this darkest of comedies. Um, and again, like nine to five, I saw it before I'd ever had my first job and I, I didn't get like necessarily what the satire about the workplace was mm -hmm. or, or even about politics. Cause I mean, honestly, I was a kid. I was like, sure. you know, I, I was aware of politics, but not, not, not really. Yeah. I was sheltered. I was in school. I didn't know what was going on really. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love that. Uh, I've got to see that again. Yeah, that's actually one of Winley's favorites too, because she also loves Jonathan Price, who's in it. So, yeah, he's he's fantastic. Yeah, I wonder. You know, I don't have the European cut. That's another one you need to get on DVD. Well, I've got the European cut on Laserdisc. That okay, was one of the first. That was one of the first movies that I got on Laserdisc. Um, was uh, the European cut of Brazil when that came out. I was so excited. I can't even tell you. Um, uh, I went to Tower Records yeah. and I got it. And I was just, you know, I was like hugging the big, huge, like <laughs> pizza box. Uh, That's container, right. You know, as I was walking out, like, hey, yeah. um, because I hadn't seen the European cut before and I loved the American version. Right. I think I read about it or. You know, I'd, I'd already kind of experienced the, the laser discs was, you know, you know, uh, where um, like extended cuts and alternate takes started right. to like hit the home uh, video market. Yeah. So I'd seen some uh, directors cuts of other films and this one was really exciting to me and I totally fell in love. With. Laser um, Laserdisc was kind of like the Betamax uh, because Betamax was better than VHS and Laserdisc. I mean, you could argue at the time was, was better than what DVDs would have become, but the problem was they were just too big and and unwieldy and and almost like big vinyl records. But the quality was amazing, especially better than VHS. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For me, yeah, I, I started moving away from Laserdiscs not because of uh, DVDs, but it, it took Blu-rays. Sure. Blu-rays came out, and then I and I never even really got into Blu-rays because streaming. Yeah, um, yeah. Came up pretty quickly after that. Now I'm just like, oh, okay, just hit me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I I totally get it. I've always been a collector. You know, my first job was at a library, so my I love collecting things, whether it be vinyl or CDs or or, or DVDs. So that'll always stay with me as long as I have room for them. I'm going to keep them as long as I can. <laughs> so I just love having something yeah. tangible. Well, I've got huge books yeah, of, uh, yeah dvds now yeah that um and i still have a couple boxes of laser discs that my husband really desperately wants me to get rid of <laughs> uh, well such an investment though keep them that make them pry them from your cold dead hands don't get rid of them <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> i'll say i'll just tell him brian said so there, there you go <laughs> I'll, I'll take the heat for it it's quite all right <laughs> yeah I well, need them for research purposes. There you go. See? Yeah. <laughs> well, as always, thank you so much, man. Okay. Thanks, Brian. We are officially on Spotify now. So if you don't use iTunes, if you don't use the Podbean app, you can go to Spotify and get all of our past episodes. You can stream it on there. So if you're a Spotify user, you can go find Damn Good Movie Me <laughs> I can't even say my own podcast. Damn Good Movie Memories. Yes, I know what I'm talking about. I'm the host, right? Okay, so go to Spotify. Look for Damn Good Movie Memories. You can stream all of that stuff. And yeah, so if you don't want to use iTunes, you don't want to use Podbean, you can use Spotify as well. All right, before we sign off, we do have t-shirts are available for sale. All you have to do is go to tpublic, that's T-E-E-P-U-B-L-I-C dot com, and you can get your very own Damn Good Movie Memories t-shirt. You can get all sizes, any gender, you can get whatever you want just at the tip of your fingers. So just go to tpublic.com, look up Damn Good Movie Memories, and you can get your very own t-shirt. If you enjoy this podcast and are an iTunes user, please do the show a favor and head on over to the official iTunes page for Damn Good Movie Memories. Be sure to leave a rating and a review. This will allow the show to appear higher in the algorithm and spread the joy of this podcast to the masses. If you are not an iTunes user, you can still listen and subscribe on Podbean at damngoodmoviememories.podbean.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook under our Damn Good Movie Memories page. 
You can also listen to a limited number of episodes on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode and be sure to tune in next week for an all new episode of Damn Good Movie Memories. I am Dr. Fuck. And I'm the actual alcoholic. And we are part of the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast. We are the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast. That's right. The way you can check us out is we are on iTunes and also Podbean. And we forgot a review recently. I got this review right here. It says right here, it says, Rock and Metal Combat Podcast is the greatest podcast in the world. And it's my number one podcast signed by Science. Now, and then Science also says... Science! Science also said... My second favorite podcast is It Doesn't Matter, The Rest Suck. Rock and Metal Combat Podcast on iTunes and Poppy. Check it out. Science!